Are you secretly rich? <laughs> <laughs> so the original plan for today was to continue on with the literal million projects that we have, <laughs> but we're in the middle of a pretty severe heat wave. So we thought, nope, we're coming to the river, soaking our feet <laughs> in the water. <laughs> and we thought we'd bring you along. So we asked you for some questions on Instagram and we were overwhelmed with all the things that you want to know about us. So we figured we'd do a Q&A while we cool off a little bit. What's the best and worst thing about living off grid? Oh, that's a good question. I think the best thing is this, like having pure privacy all the time, the ability to do whatever we want whenever we want and not have anybody telling us, you know, like neighbors and all of that. Yeah. The worst thing is that you have to do everything <laughs> for yourself. There's no government help. There's no one creating power for you or water for you or any of that. It's a more difficult life for mm -hmm. sure, but it comes with all of these benefits. So it's worth it. I think for me, the best thing is the inadvertent health benefits. The work that we need to do just to live and be comfortable in the dome and eventually the house keeps our bodies healthy, but I also feel that like we're using them the way that they're supposed to be mm. used and we're not using them based off a machine that somebody created to try and stimulate that muscle movement. If that makes any yeah. sense. No, it makes complete sense. Well, like the firewood yesterday, like I can, sitting here right now, I can feel it everywhere. Like, oh, I can feel it looking at you too. <laughs> Oh, next question. <laughs> Why did you put all that time, effort, and money into the sphere, referring to the dome, and not just build the house? The sphere? Is that how they worded it? The sphere, yeah. That's cute. We had two choices. We could either rent an apartment or build this dome for the same price as it would be to rent an apartment. So we lived in an RV full time during the winter. It was hard. It was really, really hard. It, we were cold all the time. There was no natural light. It felt like we were sacrificing too much. So mm -hmm. we made the decision, like we couldn't do it for a second winter. This is a dream yeah. for Tyler and I. And I, I don't want to end up building a house that I say, I wish I had have done something differently. Yeah. So I truly believe, we both truly believe that this isn't something you rush. And that's why we needed somewhere to live while we worked through every single detail of how the house is going to, how it flows and how it's going to function for us throughout the course of our life. Do you see off-grid life as a lifelong plan? Yes. Uh, now, I personally could not imagine living any other way. Like, no. hello. I also just, I feel more connected and um, kind of just like, peaceful. It's just, you're more in tune with nature and life. And yeah, I, I just can't I see. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't picture it. No. Is life way better with the new luxury pretty? The shipping container bathroom? The shitter. Shipping shitter. <laughs> <laughs> life, I can't even begin to explain it. It is... It's huge. Yeah, it's Who huge. would have thought having a privy or an outhouse or a bathroom or whatever you want to call it, who would have thought that it would make such a difference in our life, but it is just- Literally everyone. Yeah, oh, I didn't. But turns out having a place to get ready, do your business, be warm, be dry, it, it's been life-changing. Yeah, it was way, way bigger of a project than we ever could have imagined it being. We spent five videos building a shipping container Which bathroom. Which means five weeks. Five weeks of our life we spent building this place, but it turned out beautiful. like it's beautiful. And that's sort of the vibe for the house that we're building. Like we're, we are not rushing. It's just, it's not gonna happen. No, exactly. I love it. Yeah, me too. Why didn't you connect the outhouse to the septic tank? So the distance was the number one thing. They are hundreds of feet apart. Over a thousand feet. Yeah, plus we're on a hill. So we would have had to use a pump to pump the waste uphill and then use gravity to bring it back downhill to the septic system. It just would not have made financial, logistical, engineering sense. Like it just- yeah. And even if you look into those pumps, they tend to fail because you're moving solid through a propeller and yeah. it just doesn't, it doesn't work well. It doesn't work well. And honestly, 
the way that the outhouse turned out and the composting toilet and just everything that we did, it just works. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, I love it. Why complicate it? Exactly. And speaking on the outhouse, why did you not put a shower in there and how is the outdoor shower? We didn't put a shower in there because two things. It would have further complicated the build by running plumbing to it. It also gets into permits when you're using running water like that. Yeah. And we already have a functioning outdoor shower. So rather than wasting time and money on something that is going to be not utilized very much, we'd rather be focusing on other projects that keep us moving forward. Totally. Do you ever disagree? Yes. <laughs> a lot. We disagree a lot. I think it's very healthy to disagree because if you're in a relationship with someone that like there is no disagreement, then I feel like there's no growth as a couple or as an individual. I mean, in our disagreements, I think it's a 90-10 split on Todd getting his way versus me getting mine. But that's because I'm right 100% of the time, but I'm such a good person that I give up 10% of the time. In all seriousness, though, like, of course we disagree. Every yeah. single relationship there's disagreements, that's what a relationship is. It's, it's compromise, it's meeting each other halfway. When the house is ready, will the dome just be a guest house? <laughs> we are building a small house, small for where we live, and rather than having a basement or a bunch of bedrooms and stuff, we decided to have a cool flex space on the property. So the dome is gonna be used if we want to get away for a little bit. I fully intend to move into it for like winter and Christmas and stuff. And then it's also if we have people come and stay with us, if we're having a party, it's nice to have a separate space so we can sneak off to bed. It's just very, it's a flex space. What is the best thing you've learned living on the land? Well. I wouldn't say I've learned it fully, but I would say I'm definitely in lessons for it. But it's like taking it as it comes, slowing down and accepting that things aren't always going to go to plan or even if you can plan and plan and plan, there's going to be delays or setbacks or something. That's like literally said, my answer. Yeah, yeah, like I definitely am not there yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah, I think the tendency for when things go wrong like it's human nature is to be frustrated and to spiral spiral yeah <laughs> and feel like you're like having setbacks and all of that but the reality is is like you can't control it so you may as well just like roll with it and just and laugh yeah. like i don't know life's too short it's a cliche but you're never going to get out alive so you might as well have fun are you planning on keeping bees in the future absolutely not and you i won't even let me get a fish tank i understand i get the bees you guys i get it there's so many of you every week. You should get bees. You should get bees. It will never happen. Also, there's just way too many bees in a hive that, like, I mean, we're good at thinking of names, but I don't think we could name every single bee, and I don't want to bring them into our life if I can't give them a proper name, you know? We've got 75 frogs in the pond, and I swear Todd knows every single name, so... <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'm allergic to them. So it's for me, it's just, it's so not worth the risk. Like the thought of having a bee around me, it's, it's no, never. In short, we don't know. Maybe. <laughs> How do you two keep so happy and grounded? Each other. Yeah. I, I think we're both yeah. really good at like checking in with one another and mm -hmm. say like, I mean, Todd does this to me all the time. Like, you seem off the last few days. Are you struggling with something? Like, let's talk about it. Did it on the way to the river. <laughs> Turned yeah. out he was just hot. <laughs> <laughs> we both grew up in small towns and it's back to basics and I feel so much happier being back. Yeah, it just feels right. I mean, everyone's different, but we've talked about this before, not getting like lost in what doesn't matter and what's not important. Like, I have a roof over my head. I have someone that loves me. I have good food. Like, we have clean drinking water. Yeah, like those are the things that like when you, when everything else is like stripped away, mm -hmm. that's all that really matters. And I think because we did strip everything away and went back to like real basics, it gave us that perspective. Well, I don't know if that makes sense. It does because everything that we're adding back in, we're making the decision to yeah. put back in. Okay, this is a good one. This is juicy. I got to sit up for this one. If Tyler wants this, and Todd wants that, is it going to be this or that? I think it's going to be this, but heavily influenced by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said it. I, I would tend to agree. How Eventually he learns he doesn't really want this and he wants that. <laughs> <laughs>
I have to say though, we come to like pretty good conclusions together. It's normally a blend of yeah. this or that. Like I, I don't think it's ever. Oh, horsefly right on my face. Did we get it? I don't see it. Probably mashed in my hair. <laughs> How does your hair always look so great? Squish bugs. Squish bugs. <laughs> Can you do a slow walking tour of your homestead, starting at the laneway? I love you guys. I don't know. It's not something we ever really thought of. I didn't think that somebody would want to see that. Is that something that like lots of people would want? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. But also, I don't know how slow it'll be because we're gay and we walk fast. <laughs> we won't have our co morning coffee. We'll slow it down for everyone. Okay. <laughs> what do you do when you get on each other's nerves? tell each other. You push. I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think open communication is yeah. just so important. Yeah, especially living in such a small space and working together. Yeah. You just have to let them know. No different than if a coworker or your friend was bothering you, you would you would tell them. I think though the longer you're in a relationship, the more direct you can be. Oh yeah. Like we've been together for like 13 years. So Tyler's pretty direct. <laughs> At this point, it's just like, you're pissing me off and I need you to not be in my space for right now. But like, you do that to me too. And it's yeah. just like, oh, okay. Well, I think it also comes with like, and like being able to see yourself too and be like, oh, like maybe I am being a little bit annoying right now or yeah. I can see why he's frustrated. Yeah. Like, fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any plans to have chickens? You have to go to bed. No, no. <sighs> okay, so I, I want chickens, but then I get stuck on ducks. And there's these Indian runner ducks that I really think would be really cute because I saw a Google image of them with cardigans on. But then ducks are also more beneficial because we have an issue with slugs, which ducks would tend to go for, whereas chickens tend to go for your greens. So they would be eating the vegetation in the garden. So I'm really stuck on what to do. <laughs> Hope that Tyler answers that question. given any thought to it. <laughs> <laughs> Less than a thought is what I've given to it. <laughs> Are you ready to be done with working and just finished with it all? No, I don't think I'm ever going to be finished with the land. I view it as a piece of art, as just as my life changes, I can see how our development of it has changed. And I'm really excited to see where it ends up over the next 30, 40, 50, 80 years. <laughs> we really enjoy it too. So it doesn't really feel like work. Yeah and like we can take time away like today and yeah yeah pace ourselves it, i don't know we really enjoy it when are you going to be able to use the solar soon we're really um really working on trying to get so much done and it comes down to prioritization right now yeah. so we have the house site ready to go and eventually we're going to get back up and working on it we've lived two years completely off grid with no electricity not a super reliable running water source <laughs> and it's been fine it's a bunch of tiny steps that are going to get us to where we're going and each day we're a little closer yeah and we just don't want to rush it there's a reason why um, it'll make more sense soon. Okay, so this is a question that we get asked all the time, different iterations, but do you want kids? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that two years ago, I couldn't have imagined my life today the way that it is and everything that I want today, I didn't want two years ago. So I'm, I would like to think self-aware enough that that could completely change and in five years we may want to start a family so i'll never rule it out yeah i won't ever rule it out either but i just i'm having the time of the uh, the time of my life building the dream property of my life with the love of my life and i don't want to mess up the flow that we've worked for 13 years to finally get into yeah why would we bring a little helene into that oh any problems with wild animals like bears? There are no bears around here. I mean, they are, we see them usually around the fall, we'll start to see their scat on the trails. You almost never see them. Yeah. It's not something we even think about or worry yeah. about. Like it's, it's so not even on the top of our priority list <laughs> at all. If you were to start the land project again, what would you do differently? I would take my time. 
I feel I'm I feel like we're taking two, our time. Two years then. <laughs> I would slow I would I would slow it way down. No, but what I mean is we didn't have a full vision until probably last September, October, really, of how the property was going to look. So we had to do we did a lot of work that we then had to undo and fix mistakes or like dome drive. We'd put it in and then had to dig it up to trench underneath it. I would have trenched and then just built the road once instead of twice. Yeah, that's a good point. When did you each know the other person was the one? This is a controversial answer. I like this. I don't think that there is such thing as the one. Oh, I love you so much. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah. I, like, I love you and I want to spend my whole life with you, but I do think that it's possible that there are other people mm -hmm. that I could have met that I would feel that same connection with. And I think putting too much weight on one person to provide you all of your happiness is unrealistic. 100%. I also think that, like, I hope that Tyler and I are together. I don't see us. I don't see anything changing, but like... I don't either. I never saw myself here either. Yeah. So if we are very fortunate that we've grown together in the same direction, but I think that there's also a toxicity in relationships where you feel as though your personal growth needs to be stunted because it doesn't go in the direction that the other person mm. or the relationship is going. And I think that that's not healthy. So I think you need to follow your growth and always be happy. And like Tyler's the one for right now. I hope he's the one forever, but that could change, you know? And if it does change, like, you'll be okay, and I'll be okay. Oh, Henry Cavill and I are gonna be <laughs> fine. <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> How has living on and off the land impacted your physical, mental, and emotional health? Oh. Since we've moved here, I've never felt more myself. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's probably because when I lived on grid, I didn't really know who I was. And that's mainly because I was chasing all of the wrong things. That first, I guess, opened my eyes when we moved into the RV and we started traveling full time and like we were having different experiences that I never thought that I would have. Uh, yeah, I just feel m more centered, more balanced. I yeah. feel stronger physically because we're always doing stuff. It's just, it's a much better quality of life. Yeah, I would agree. And like my mental health, I mean, I'm still on a journey, which I think everyone is for their whole life. But yeah. I think for me, the biggest thing, I feel way more physically healthy. I feel so much happier. And I just, every day I wake up and sure, it may be, there may be days that are extremely frustrating, but I go to bed every single night knowing that I made the right decision. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Love you, toots. With what you know now, what trade would you want to be? A plumber, electrician, or carpenter? That's a good uh, question. That's a really good question. I would want to be a carpenter. Why? Because I think that knowing how to properly support and secure and fix things is really important. And I also know that it's something that I have an idea of what you want to do. And I think that like, it, there's no point of us both taking up a trade to do the same thing. I'm assuming mm -hmm. we're both going to trade school. <laughs> yeah. I would je definitely choose electrician. Yeah. I just feel like I have a very natural aptitude for how all the systems are built. And I mean, I it's really- It's analytical. It's analytical. And I really, really enjoy the process. Like the solar system, like I designed all of that myself. Like I figured out everything yeah. myself, which was incredibly empowering, but I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be an electrician all day, every day. I would be scared to get shocked. I wouldn't want you to be an electrician because to me, that's kind of like being a cop. Like I'd never know if you're going to come home alive, you know? Yeah. That would be stressful. Yeah. I don't need you in an urn on the mantle. I need you like on the couch with me. <laughs> At least you wouldn't have to pay for the cremation. That's true, you'd be half done. When the cabin arrives, how much work will you guys have to do on the inside? Everything. Yeah. The only thing that we are bringing in the experts for is the actual engineering and all of the fusing of everything together. A house is such a massive investment mm -hmm. and we do good work, we have never done that type of work and I do not want to test that type of work yeah. on my own house. Complicated welding when it comes to like 
very important structural requirements that need to be signed off by engineers is just not something that we want to get into. It's no different than when we had the foundation for the dome built. Like that, the, all those helical piles, they all needed to be tested and coated to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And we could have done concrete, we could have done sono tubes, but we made the decision to just let the experts take care of that. And we're really glad we did because when we're in the dome, we're never worried about tumbling down over the hill or like... <laughs> yeah. So when the house gets here, it's going to be the outside done, windows and doors in, the inside is going to be framed. Ah! Horsefly! And then we are going to take over doing every single thing from the inside, which I'm really excited for. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Are you secretly rich? <laughs> no, no, we are not secretly rich. This is something that people say all the time. Todd and I, we sacrificed a lot in our early 20s. Actually, all of our 20s. Basically, all we did was work. We both had several jobs at one time. We saved up all of our money. We got into buying old houses and started renovating them. We've told this story to you guys before in different videos, but no, it's, we're not rich. It's just a lot of hard work and sacrifices, plus us willing to learn the skills to cut down on labor. Right Which now, is the biggest yeah. expense of a lot of these projects. Totally. Yeah. We're just paying for material and we're doing it as we can afford it and we're learning along the way and I wish we were rich. Yeah. But Maybe in another life. Any sugar daddies out there? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this question. What's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself and one another through this process? Ooh. Okay, so for me, I would say how resilient I am. Mm. Before, I was very quick to quit or pass blame and not take accountability or just like move on to something else. And now I find I still have some work to do, but I find that I'm able to push through problems and get through a situation better yeah. than I could before. I and agree. I think what I learned about you is just your, um, like caring, like your, just the way that you care. It, Tyler was never one for physical labor or gardening or anything mm. like that. But like now that the gardens aren't like in a subdivision, it's shrubs and stuff. But now that it's food production, you just care so much because it brings comfort to us, to people around us, it, like sharing food and stuff. It's just, yeah, you're caring. Hmm. Before I thought you were self-centered, <laughs> didn't care about anyone. That's what I heard. <laughs> um, for me, I think the biggest thing that I've learned about myself is that you truly can do anything. I never in a million years thought that I would be doing electrical or plumbing or all of the ridiculous tasks <laughs> that we've got up to. Jack hammering a boulder. <laughs> yeah, like it's just there's so many things that we've done that I truly didn't think that I was capable of, but I somehow managed to do it, which has like built a lot of confidence in myself that I can continue to do more and more. Um, and the biggest thing that I learned about you, I think that Todd has the best vision when we're doing gardening or you have a plan for something and sometimes I'm like resistant to it or don't want to do sometimes. it. sometimes. But you always, like, it always works out exactly how it's supposed to, even when I'm like, this is crazy. Are you talking about the mid-project meltdowns you always take? Yeah. <laughs> But thank but I, you. I'm trusting you like a lot more lately that it's gonna it's gonna be good. <laughs> we are just gonna continue enjoying the rest of the day and um I've got like 20 more questions. Are you serious? Oh yeah. You're gonna wanna buckle up, buddy. We're not gonna post a 45 minute video. Oh we can remember we said we could maybe start doing Wednesday videos? Yeah. Leave us a comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. If you want us to post an extended version of this video on Wednesday, let us know. We can do that. Well, then that means you need to stay here and keep going. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let us know. Maybe we'll see you Wednesday. Maybe not. It's anyway, up to you. Next question. Have you or are you 